It's a raccoon with a talk show sling and culture facts you might not know from the biggest flops to the greatest hits. This is Trash Can Tidbits. Hi, everybody. It's Beaton here, and welcome back to Trash Can Tidbits. I hope you enjoy what I have for you this week. Before we begin, I want to take the moment to address an error with the trivia question I asked last week. The Broadway musical that I presented for you in the question, The Drowsy Chaperone, is in fact incorrect. The correct musical is actually Thoroughly Modern Millie. I guess I got confused because both shows starred Sutton Foster and they take place in the 1920s, but the overall intention and question is still pretty much the same. My new in quest- question that I intended to ask is, who was the original actress cast to play the role of Millie in Thoroughly Modern Millie before Sutton Foster was hired? The correct answer is Kristen Chenoweth. Chenoweth was originally chosen for the lead role and the music was accommodated to fit her singing style. Shortly before the show went to Broadway, however, she got the lead role in a self-titled sitcom called Kristen, which premiered in 2001 and was canceled after only six episodes. The role of Millie ended up going to a then unknown Sutton Foster and she became a Broadway sensation. As for Kristen Chenoweth, it wasn't all bad. She later went on to originate the role of Glinda in a little musical you may have heard of called Wicked. Yep, even a raccoon like me can make some mistakes, so I apologize for setting up last week's question with the wrong Broadway show. Anyway, let's get started with fact number one. Did you know that two actresses who starred in a classic movie about rival actresses duking it out actually had a life imitating art sort of relationship in real life? In 1950, the movie All About Eve was released, which was about a young, inexperienced, but scheming, aspiring actress named Eve, played by Ann Baxter, weaseling her way into the life of veteran actress Margot Channing, played by Betty Davis. In real life, in the early 80s, Betty Davis starred on the TV drama Hotel, but was forced to leave early on due to illness. Ann Baxter ended up replacing her, playing her sister-in-law, and Davis decided not to return to the series after she recovered. Fact 2. Did you know that Frasier stars Kelsey Grammer and David Hyde Pierce not only play brothers on that show, but also play brothers on another notable show? Grammer is also well known for playing Sideshow Bob on The Simpsons, and in Season 8, Episode 16, Brother from Another Series, Pierce guest starred on the show playing Sideshow Bob's brother, Cecil, and even contained a reference to the never-seen character from Frasier, Maris. The reference was completed years later in Season 19, Episode 8, Funeral for a Friend, which guest starred the late John Mahoney, who played Martin Crane on Frasier, coming in to play Sideshow Bob's father as well. Fact 3. Did you know that there was an early attempt to continue the Pink Panther series without its lead star, Peter Sellers? In 1964, both the Pink Panther and the unintentional sequel, A Shot in the Dark, was released, making an immediate superstar out of Sellers. He adamantly refused to play the character again, and the first movie not to feature Sellers as Inspector Clouseau was the appropriately titled Inspector Clouseau, released in 1968 starring Alan Arkin. That movie did not do well at all and is largely forgotten about. It wasn't until 1975 that Sellers was persuaded to come back and play Clouseau and went on to make three more Pink Panther movies. However, the 1968 movie did get one thing right. The trench coat and hat that Alan Arkin wore in his Clouseau movie was later adopted by Sellers and became a staple of the character. Fact 4. Did you know that Sparks the Dragonfly from the Legend of Spyro trilogy had a different voice actor in each of the three games? The games notably featured the celebrity talents of Elijah Wood as Spyro and Gary Oldman as Spyro's mentor, Ignitus. But the voice of Sparks, Spyro's sidekick, had three different voice actors, one for each game. He was played by David Spade in the first game, Billy West in the second game, and Wayne Brady in the third game. I guess the producers couldn't afford to lose Wood and Ullman, but they could afford to lose the sidekick for each game, I guess. Fact 5. Did you know that LEGO Batman 2 DC Super Heroes is the first LEGO game to feature true voice acting? Before all that, All the LEGO games, including the LEGO Star Wars and Indiana Jones games, had mumbling and grunting sounds for the characters. It was told pretty much in pantomime. 
Among the notable voice cast that appears in the game is Clancy Brown, reprising his role as Lex Luthor from Superman the Animated Series, and Troy Baker as Batman. Baker had previously played Two-Face in Batman Arkham City, and would also go on to play the Joker in Batman Arkham Origins. To the best of my knowledge, Baker is the only actor who has played both Batman and the Joker. Fact 6. Did you know that Hollywood legend Cary Grant was considered for the lead role for two notable movie musicals, but gave the same response and reason? He was considered to play Professor Harold Hill in The Music Man and Professor Henry Higgins in My Fair Lady, but not only turned them down, but he also declared that if the actors who originated the roles on Broadway, Robert Preston and Sir Rex Harrison respectively, were not cast in the movies, he would not even go see them. There's an even more amusing footnote. Cary Grant, being English-born, actually had a thick Cockney accent when he was much younger, and he compared his original manner of speaking to Eliza Doolittle's in My Fair Lady. Fact 7. Did you know that actor William Daniels has an undeniable link to founding father John Adams? To begin with, he played Adams in the original production of the Broadway musical 1776, and repeated the role in the 1972 movie. He went on to play various members of the Adams line in other TV productions such as John Quincy Adams in the TV series The Adams Chronicles. He also starred on the TV show Saint Elsewhere where his character claims he's a direct descendant of John Adams and makes numerous references to 1776. And finally, Daniels is probably best known in my generation as Mr. Feeney on the TV show Boy Meets World where he is the principal of John Adams High School. Fact 8. Did you know that Al Pacino notably didn't voice himself in the video game Scarface The World Is Yours, but did in fact assist the team in searching for a voice double? Many actors auditioned, but the top three were sent to Pacino, and the actor he selected was Andre Soliuzzo, who has appeared in such projects as American Dad, Avatar The Last Airbender, and Samurai Jack. What the producers didn't realize was that Soliuzzo was Al Pacino's personal chauffeur for many years before becoming a voice actor, and was therefore able to match Pacino's voice and mannerisms perfectly in recreating the voice of Tony Montana for the Scarface video game. Fact 9. Did you know that for the James Bond video game Nightfire, there were no original plans to have Pierce Brosnan's likeness used for the in-game Bond model? There were trailers already made that featured the generic-looking Bond model created for the previous game, H. Under Fire. But sometime before Die Another Day was released, the team at Electronic Arts were given permission to use Brosnan's likeness, but the game notably did not use his voice. They instead used actor Maxwell Caulfield, who is best known for playing the lead role in Grease 2, and actually doesn't sound anything like Brosnan. Fortunately, Brosnan agreed to lend both his likeness and his voice to the next Bond game, Everything or Nothing, which would end up being the last time he played James Bond. Fact 10. Did you know that the Disney cartoon Tailspin came about from a successful theatrical re-release of The Jungle Book? Before that, there were original plans to have Launchpad McQuack from DuckTales be the star of the show, hence why the word tail is in the title, and even the name of Baloo's plane is called the Sea Duck as another reference. But based on the response to the theatrical re-releases of The Jungle Book in 1984 and 1990, the idea eventually came to have Baloo the Bear and other characters from the movie star in the show, but not make it directly related to The Jungle Book at all. Launchpad McQuack appearing in another Disney show would eventually come to fruition later on with Darkwing Duck. And here's this week's trivia question. Lisa Kudrow, best known for playing Phoebe Buffay on Friends, brought her signature goofiness and lovable eccentricities onto the show. Though for the first few seasons, Kudrow also played Phoebe's estranged twin sister, Ursula, a rather callous and manipulative character that served as a headache for Phoebe for a long time. Ursula wasn't exclusive to Friends, though. She actually started out on another show that was on at the same time as Friends. My question to you is, which TV show did Lisa Kudrow originate the character of Ursula Buffay? And there we go for this week. Apologies once again for the question snafu in the last video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's video and I can't wait to make more. Please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, share, and ring the bell for future video notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.